things and exercising it. Hey fam, this is Miss V and I'm here at the Spirit of Our Ancestors down in Mobile, Alabama. And I'm at the play and Ocean in My Bones and I'm sitting here with a Cleveland native who had a starring role in this play. He played Billy Foster, William Foster, the owner of the Clotilda. And he's sitting right next to me, a black man playing a white man. <laughs> he was passing. <laughs> That's he said right. he's passed before. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, definitely. Uh, so thank you. Thank you for agreeing to, to this you. interview. Thank I'm so you glad so we got Thank you so much. First, First, fam, I cannot believe this man is 80. Not only does he not look 80, he does not sound 80, he does not walk 80. <laughs> wow, what is the secret? I've been blessed. No, it's more that's than that. You've been blessed, absolutely. But you got to give us another key. Play, okay, I played a lot of sports. Okay. In, uh -huh. in school and then in the Air Force. And it, I stay in shape. I do a little exercises every now and then. The only trouble is with my back. That's the only pain that I have. And you're going to do but a movie. I, yes, I'm getting ready to do a movie in Cleveland, May, June, and July called The Color of Blood and Wolf Water by Michael Oakman. Ain't slowing down one bit. You know, 80. I don't plan to. Wow. So, so tell us, how did you get involved with this play? In this Ocean. has been a learning experience for me. How so? I had never heard anything, and that upset me, about no Clotilda, about no last slave ship, and I was trying to figure out why in my history haven't I been told about this. Right. So it was kind of a shock to me, but it's been a learning experience. I called Mr. Spivey and I told him, I said, you got to put me in this. I said, I don't want no money. Just get, get, get me, tell me how to get the mobile and I'll be wow. there. And I took a train for 36 hours. Wow. To get here, and it spent the cast just love me. They call me Pops, <laughs> and they just love me, and they've been helpful for me. And uh, it's been a beautiful experience. I can't. I want to come back next year. This play ought to be nationwide because these kids that did this yet last night and tonight. They are professionals. I've been doing this for 40 years, and I have seen professional actors couldn't do what these kids did today. I, I told Tiris Spivey, the director and the writer, I told Tiris the exact same thing, yeah. that they exercise a, le a level of professionalism and expertise that you got people that have been in business for decades yes. don't, yes. don't have. Yes. Like That's very true. convincing, and yeah. I loved your, I loved your role as, as Billy Foster, and you stood there, and that, I could feel the vulnerability, I could feel the the, the regret. That was the hardest part when I started reading the script. You know, you can just speak lines, and people will hear what you say and they'll understand it. But that ending speech. When he realizes that he has to burn his ship, I thought about it, I thought about it, I thought about it. I said, this man loved this ship. He had to build it. And I really didn't think that he was like mayor. I think he got, Captain Foster got caught up in the time, not condoning what he did, but he got caught up in the time era and he made that bet. Deal with the devil. And I had to make a quick transition into letting the audience know how distraught I was over burning my ship. That was the hardest thing to do. That deal, it was a deal with the devil. That yeah. man loved that ship. Yes, yes he did. Yes, he did. And, and so and I loved how you embodied that. You could feel that he loved her, he regretted. Thank you. It was thank that lost thank love. You, thank you. Thank you, know? you. So do you have any favorite scenes in the play? Did you, did you cry? One, did you, I cried. I, I cried. <laughs> I, yeah, I cried. Okay. I had to. Mean, right? I had to. It wouldn't have been real if I wasn't right. crying. Yeah. And I and and I felt it. I, I, I felt too. him. And that's what I talked to Mrs. Spivey. Had me talk to the cast. It's all about preparation. And I let them know 
that if you want to continue to do this, you got to work at it. When you get that script, you got to take that script home. They used to tease me at the Caramel Theater because they know when I get a script, I go home and put on my coffee pot. I do not go to sleep for 24 hours. I turn off my TV, I turn off my phone, I put my dog to bed, I sit at the dining room table, I go through that script all the way until the following night at rehearsal. Then that night when I go home, I die. But when I wake up the next morning, I'm refreshed and ready to go, and I'm a, I'm ahead of everybody else. I know my character. I know what gestures I'm going to use. So I try to instill that in the kids, and um, it works. What was they got to, busy. I've seen you in a number of productions. Always amazing. Thank How long you. have you been in the business? Well, I retired from the Air Force in uh, 1980. And I retired in uh, Omaha, Nebraska. No one in my family ever went to college. And I said, why not? I'm retired now. I don't have a wife. I'm going to go to college. And I went to the University of Nebraska. I wanted to be a writer. And I couldn't get my humanities class. I mean, yeah, um, the, my humanities class. And the guy said, my counselor said, take introduction to theater. Mm. And I took the introduction to theater. And I got good. And you got the book, because so it is a book. I've been acting for, since 1980. Yeah, there is the acting book. Yeah, book. yeah. It, is. <laughs> it will bite you good. And it too. got me too. <laughs> it got me too. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, I, I see a, a, a huge, a huge career still in front of you. I hope you're right. What would you right. like to do? What would you like to do next? I know you're ready to do a movie, but if you can uh, wave your magic wand, what would you see you doing your, your next production? Theater, film? You Broadway. know, it's all. You know, it's 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 now to the point where I've already been to the mountaintop right. in theater. Right. Um, as long as people know me and they love me because I'm a lovable person. Yes, you are. <laughs> and um, that that's satisfactory for me. I, I used to say, you remember when Denzel Washington said, King Kong ain't got doo-doo on me? You remember <laughs> right, that? Yeah. What I used to say, Denzel Washington ain't got on me. Okay, hello. <laughs> but remember I'm, that, not, Denzel. I'm not, I'm not, I'm <laughs> not. I would, of course, I would love to get in one movie just to leave my grandbaby something when the pops by. Right. I would like that, but if it, it's not going to materialize, it's not going to materialize. I know that because I don't, I can't go to New York and I can't go to Hollywood. Okay. So. Can or won't. I can't. Okay. I don't have the finances. I mean, I'm just being true. Right. But see, that doesn't bother me because right. I've already been to the mountain. Every play, when I'm finished, and people come around me and say, Rodney, I don't know what, you are, ter you are terribly good, good, good. That's my, that's, that's my, I, when I leave, when I leave here, I want people to remember Rodney. All right. We're going to remember you. We'll never forget you, Rodney. That's what it is. Never forget you. So. Thank you. Thank you for a wonderful performance. Thank, thank you, you so much. You. Thank you for having Come home me. Soon. We miss you in Cleveland. Yes, I miss you all, too. <laughs> all right. Well, tell them. Can, thank you. Are, are you on social media? Can they reach out to you? How can, they, how can your fans reach out to you, Rodney? Um, tell them. I'm not on um, Facebook or anything like that because it's kind of overwhelming uh -huh. to me. I can't. I'm too old to be, you know, my phone. I, I just have a phone. So I would love to hear from you. You can call me at 216-938-0548. You're a bold man and, um, to put your number yeah, up there like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That ain't no, don't, don't worry don't about it. it. <laughs> don't worry about it. I'm looking for a girlfriend, too, by the way. Why you calling? <laughs> why, why you calling? I'm looking for a girlfriend. All right. Well, thank you. I'm, you going to get one after this interview. <laughs> <laughs> thank Peace you out, for having me. You're welcome. <laughs>